everybody, welcome to Throwback Thursday. I'm here with Danny. Hello. And he brought in a silver tower set all painted up for us to try the new Warhammer Quest. So this is a Throwback Thursday about Warhammer Quest, but it's also about the new Warhammer Quest. I love the old Warhammer Quest. I played it a bunch of times as a kid and also Hero Quest and Advanced Hero Quest. This is the newest in it, like sort of iteration of dungeon exploring games from Games Workshop. It has an expansion already, which is Shadespire. No, not Shadespire. It's Shadespire is the, the one that's the new like dueling game. It's Shadows over Hammered. Hammer's Fall. It's like there's a new human city basically, and they're doing explorations underneath it. It's a little bit more like the original Hero Quest, where there's dungeon tiles and you're kind of like progressively building a dungeon. In this one, Silver Tower, you're exploring one of the Silver Towers of Zinch, one of my favorite epic miniatures of all time, because it would add armor saves to everybody around it. Um, the Silver Tower is there, the Gaunt Summoner is inside, you're trying to learn his true name by collecting pieces of an amulet, because if you do, he grants you one wish. So adventurers from all over the mortal realms, good guys, bad guys, whoever, teaming up, going to the Silver Tower and trying to explore it. It's a bit different from the previous one, where you're not using a lantern and going through doorways and unlocking new bits of, of dungeon, and it's clever in that you also can't accidentally walk off the table. In the original Warhammer Quest, the dungeon would build in weird directions sometimes, and you'd have to figure out how you're going to keep it from literally going off the edge of whatever table you were playing on. And this one's more of a conveyor belt. If there's two tiles behind you that are safe, one disappears and everything slides forward so that you can continue basically going as you want to go. Now, I really like the idea that they're exploring a silver tower. It's sort of a mystical labyrinth, a bit like labyrinth, but instead of David Bowie at the end, you have a Guillermo del Toro monster with lots of eyes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to be using some of my heroes today because you did buy the new expansion. Yep. And it, what's cool about it is it comes with some um, new cards for, and actually you got a pre-order one too for a battle mage. So new cards so that you can use other heroes from the Warhammer Age of Sigmar universe. Um, and there's also an app you can use that will give you uh, additional heroes on top of that. Almost Almost any hero model that you have in Warhammer, whoever's in your army, you can use in this game. So I'm going to get to use a Battle Mage, because you've got your Battle Mage card from the pre-order, as well as a Lord um, Castellant, which is the guy with the Warding Lantern, the Green Lantern uh, Stormcast guy, instead of the Questor. You're using two models from the starter, which are the... Mistweaver and the Shard. Yes, yeah, so the Elves. You get the Elf Brigade, I've got the Celestial Brigade, um, and we're going to invade the Silver Tower and try and grab some, uh, like some, uh, some artifact pieces for the true names. I think it's how many pieces before you fill the amulet? Is it eight? I think it's eight. It's yeah. eight. It would make sense if it was nine, though, because it's Zinch. There is like a mini map in is the there? middle where you don't get a shard. Oh, so. okay, gotcha. So maybe there's nine adventures. If it wasn't the magic number nine, I'd be disappointed whoever wrote this because that is Zinch's number. <laughs> um, and we're probably we're gonna go through one today, so one of the adventures today, and we'll probably have time to do another one. And then going forward, I'm hoping Danny can come back and we'll actually get to go through all of these until we get to the end of the actual adventure because this you is super it. fun. <laughs> um, he painted all these miniatures except for my two heroes, and they look fantastic. We're gonna show you those. We'll give you a basic walk through the camp mechanics of the game. If you're familiar with Warhammer Age of Sigmar, or Hero Quest. This is kind of a mashup. So the cards, the, the, the sort of like combat and stat system for the heroes is a lot like Age of Sigmar. The cards and the mechanics for moving around and exploring are a lot like the original Warhammer Quest. So we'll give you a brief overview of that. We'll jump into a game and we'll start exploring the Silver Towers of Zeech. So here is Silver Tower, the new Warhammer Quest. We've got some stuff laid out. I'm just gonna show you guys miniatures first um, to get started with. Here's the hero posse. All painted up by Danny. He's got the uh, Auric Rune Father. My favorite miniature in the whole box, the Dark Earth Chieftain, all painted up. His Questor, his Sigmarite War Priest. Um, this is his Battle Mage. He used the old Quest Mage, which is awesome because it's Gandalf the Big Hands. <laughs> and he's just great. Um, and then Danny also did me the favor of bringing one of his original Warmer Quest Minis because it is tradition that we show off miniatures that we painted when we were kids. Um, and miniatures we painted when we were adults. I think that is a fantastic job. His sword broke off like every other one of those barbarian swords. And that miniature actually stands up as a great miniature even today. Um, you've got the Gaunt Summoner here, who is the penultimate boss of the whole thing. The Ogroid Thaumaturge that Danny converted with a big war side there, who's super cool. Um, the Familiars, some of my favorite models, because they remade Moonface, who's a fantastic old familiar miniature from... Um, Long, long ago. The Walking Fish, which is actually a piece of art from Mordheim, is finally made into a miniature. You've got, I don't know, Skaxis, like, because he's basically Skaxis from... Um, he thinks he's a greater demon. He does think he's a greater demon, yeah, but he's basically a Skaxis. Um, and then, and then Booklegs, who is also a classic original familiar. I could actually pull it, I have all these familiars in metal right now and show them to you. Um, but these are just a great reimaginings. I love that this guy's got like a little dragon butt holding up this book. Um, great reimaginings of classic 80s familiar models. We have the, these are basically the Marauder equivalents, the Zinch Marauders, what are they called again? They're the, the ac acolytes? acolytes, that's right, yeah. The the Auric or Zenix or something. something. Carrick, Carrick Acolytes, that's right. And then the Beastman equivalent back here. 
And what are they called? They're the... Tanzgors? Zangors. Yeah. Zangors. Yeah, yeah. Zangors. Uh, the Scutlings, which are the spiders that have all like, mutated in Zinch's presence. Uh, and then we got pink and blue horrors, and you get exactly enough for them to all subdivide. So, two pink horrors turn into four blue horrors. Four blue horrors turn into eight, I think they're sparklings? What are they called? The, um... Oh, I can't remember. But basically, there's two on a base, because each of the blue guys turns into one of these little dudes. And then finally, the Skaven... Oh, jeez. They're like assassins. But they're, um, the Zinch has mutated them a little bit so that they have a, a, a hologram of each other. So you never know which one you're attacking, so they're identical for a reason. Because it's split in two, and when you fight one, you don't know if it's a projection or if it's the real guy. And so these are the, um, the, the monsters that come in the box. Just, honestly, a fantastic collection of models. I, I've, I know so many people, actually, that have just bought this purely to get all of these miniatures. Um, and then you got your two other heroes here, which is the Temporal Shard, which is the almost, like, War Dancer equivalent, kind of like a Witch Elf War Dancer, and then the Mistweaver Shia, or Sai, Sai, Mistweaver Sai, yeah, which is almost like um, a cross, you know, Witch Elf and a Harlequin Shadow Seer. Beautiful miniatures, really well painted. Here's my two scrubs in from the Mortal Realms, with my Lord Celestant, sorry, Sir Castellant, and my Battle Mage, doing his Ooga Booga hands. This is Mentok the Mind Taker, he's gonna take your mind. <laughs> um, all set up, and I apologize, this is the one thing that's gonna be a bit hard to see, is the cool um, limited edition card for the Battle Mage has like a silvering to it, it's got the, the gloss effect. It's gonna be hard to photograph, but <laughs> he's pretty super cool. So going through the guts of stuff, we're gonna go through the, the sort of like the progression of setting up an encounter. Now, the encounters, there's two things. There's the guidebook, which says read me first. And the guidebook goes through the, the basic premises of playing the game. So setting up all the miniatures we just showed you, the heroes and the hero cards. There's the fate board, which is this thing right here. This has your treasure cards, your skill cards, your renown, which is your experience system. So instead of having to track everything on your player cards, you have this to do it. Um, and then the fate dice. Um, and these, these basically, each of your guys is assigned a color, so you picked, I think it was black and, oh, it's by your dice, that's right. So the color of your dice is the color that you are on here, so black and blue will be the two elves, and then white and red will be the two um, Stormcast. Uh, and whenever you earn an experience point, you, you move these guys around, and then when you lap, you get to draw a skill card, because that's how you level up. And the skill cards are all generic, um, and what they do is they give you additional powers and like, more abilities and stuff too. Um, these, when you roll them, these fate dice basically go up here into this pile. Any doubles get removed, but they can have additional effects. And they can get used, sorry, that would come up too. They can get used by any player. So you can buy them to buy abilities. They're kind of like uh, might points in Lord of the Rings, but when you use one, it locks the other dice for your opponents. You can't grab all the high dice and lock everybody else out of the dice pool, basically. Um, you get some bonus dice for rolling your attacks from guys, and then this is the shard we're playing for right now. Um, and what's cool with the shard is the symbol on the shard is the wind of magic that you're fighting for. So we're fighting for Shish right now, which is the first one, um, and it gives you uh, certain powers and also tells you which encounter you're setting up to go and do it. We got port these are where the monster spawn out of whenever you set up a, a tile, and then these are all wound and stun counter. So stun is the skull with all the little flying things all around it, um, and then that's one wound, and they, they go by number, so three wounds, and it means you can mark wounds on guys without having to put down too many tiles. This is the lantern! <laughs> it's whoever has the lead, so whoever is currently the lead character in an encounter who goes first during the turn gets this, and it normally in multiplayer games would pass around the circle, it'll just go back and forth between me and Danny when we're setting up the game. You've got your card, my lord uh, Castellant, he's got a move stat, just like Age of Sigmar, he can move three squares per turn for an action dice. He's got a save, you know, football save. Agility, that's your ability to break off and do certain abilities. So you have to roll. So he's a big heavy dude. He has to roll a five plus to do it. You have four slots for your hero dice. So whenever you start the turn, you roll four dice and you put your dice out in here. It's a good roll. Uh, that's a pretty good roll. Holy moly. Um, and when you spend the dice, this is a little bit like, um, if you guys have watched my Relic Blade videos, a little bit like Relic Blade. You have to spend a die that is equal to your 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 purchase price basically so to use my lantern i have to spend a six dice to do it now i can also spend a die off of here if i want to do it and it has to be a six to be able to unlock it and then you roll to make your actual attack so if i want to use my halberd my halberd's a one die a plus i can use any die to do it so i can use this two to attack with my halberd i roll a four plus to hit if i don't hit i don't hit if i do hit i do two damage to whoever i'm attacking everything has a range so combat is base to base Area, you can use it any time, and it hits everyone in the same tile as you. Um, and Missile is anyone in line of sight, so maybe it's not blocked by other models, you can draw a line of squares in between you and it. 
Finally, you've got um, your roll to hit, so whatever you're rolling to hit, and then the effect, so damage is two for my halberd and stun, which is I place a stun counter on the monster if it hits them and does additional effects. Everybody's got special skills too, Light of Azur. If I roll a six to hit with my attack roll and use the Warring Lanterns, everyone in the area also takes D3 wounds and then is stunned. That's gross, he goes off like a nuclear bomb if you roll a six. And then Healing Light. Put a hero dice here, it has to be a 6 plus hero dice, but there's no roll. Um, and then remove a wound marker from everybody in the party. Now this is also your wound track up here. Whenever you get wounded, you shut off one of these squares, and while you're wounded you get less action dice to do things. Now there's lots of ways to regain wounds, his lantern is one. You can just recuperate when there's no enemies in the board to get back D3 wounds. Um, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. I have the special rules, Celestial and Unrelenting, which give me additional abilities. And then Renown, if you stun three more adversaries with a Warding Lantern, you gain a Renown. So it's handy to use the Warding Lantern because you can get extra experience just for throwing stunts into people. Alright, so encounter setup. Like I said, we're going for this shard of sheesh, so we're gonna have to look up and see which of the setups we're going to use, which is in the adventure book. Don't read this until instructed. Uh, Danny used the best analogy ever when he described this book to me. He said, it's like the choose your own adventure books. It's all paragraph numbers so that they mix everything up so you can't find out what the information's like, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, and we get our basic story here. So in a vast Statue on chamber to the champions first come together. Whether the, by dark designs of the gone summer or the vagaries of fate and destiny, each champion descended the winding stairs and faced one each other across the side last floor. How each had come to this place is an epic tale itself. Why they had come remains a secret and only to them. Yet it was clear that for now their paths were intertwined. This is one of my favorite pieces of art, actually, I think, that's been done for the Age of Sigmar. It's basically the Gun Summoner's chamber. It's filled with Zinch demons. And there's the Quester Knight down there. Like, that puts it in scale how vast and cosmic this fantasy universe is. All right, so you get your first page in here, which is really important, the tower's trial, starting a trial. Read this passage after you've set up your heroes in the ingress chamber as detailed on page seven of the guidebook. So we put the ingress chamber down, whoop, right here, and we set up our heroes. So I'm gonna put my tank up front, my big dude, my wizard in the back, you're gonna put in your shard, your team shard, and your mist weaver in behind, supporting, makes sense. So now, we're gonna, uh, if this is your first trial, which it is, read The Legend Begins on the next page, then read Passage 89. So Legend Begins is the story that we just read, and then we go to flip to 89. If you wish to fight the dragon, go to chapter 89. The dragon kills you. All right, so um, the energies of the portal surged around the champions and propelled them down a twisting tunnel of light. Moments later, they stumbled from the portal's exit into a strange new chamber. Regaining their composure, the champions squared their shoulders and steeled themselves against the dangers of the come. The first trial within the Silver Tower had begun. So it tells you what shard to put down, which is this one right here. Whoop. Um, before you go any further, you must construct the exploration deck for the trial as follows. Take the seven exploration cards marked with the Heesh icon. So you go through the exploration cards, there's a big deck of them, and you find all the ones marked with this icon right here. So we've done that. Now, set aside the Librarian and the Whirligig Passage and two others at random. So we need the Librarian and the Whirligig Passage. The Whirligig Passage, the Librarian, and then we'll shuffle these, and I'll have you grab two. Those are two other at random. <clears throat> Shuffle the remaining three cards together. One of these is the Grand Chamber card, Searing Beams, but you would not know exactly where the deck it's going to be. So here's our last three. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And they're shuffled up. Once the three cards are thoroughly shuffled, you place these remaining three cards next to the entrance deck. Uh, take the Librarian and the two random cards, set them aside, shuffle them together and put them on the top stack, and then the Whirly Gig Chamber will go at the very top because it's the first chamber that we're going to enter. So we'll just shuffle this up, Whoop, doo, doo, doo. put them on top of the stack, so now we've got six of our seven cards, and the Whirly Gig Chamber is coming up first, and it's going to be the first thing that we put down. With everything set up, we go to our first round. So there's lots of phases. The first one's the destiny phase. The runemark player takes the destiny dice and rolls them. So it's these guys right here. Putting aside any doubles. So the double fives come out, the double ones come out. And we end up with a four. Wow, it's a good destiny phase. Later dice, these discard dice might have consequences on page 19. So later on, when we roll uh, doubles and triples and quadruples and stuff, we get combinations. There can be all kinds of weird things that happen, mostly based on the familiars. They show up and do weird things. So the names are Pug, Blot, Tweak, and Slop. And they're their familiars, and they, they come up and they, they cause mayhem when we roll doubles. There's the hero phase. The hero phase begins. Each player will complete in turns uh, activating their hero. So what we do is we roll all of our destiny dice and assign them to our charts. And these were terrible rolls for me. <laughs> I got three ones and a five. 
So what that's going to mean is I have no way of activ activating my Mystic Shield this turn. I could do my Lantern, potentially. And Danny just rolled a hot dog bunch of sixes, <laughs> and he could probably activate anything he wants. <laughs> so with the Destiny phase complete, the hero phase begins. Each player takes a complete turn with their hero, starting with the Runemark player and going clockwise around the table. So we're just going back and forth. Our hero's turn, the first thing you do in this is make your action roll. So we roll our action dice, put them down. Um, over the page, you'll learn how to make them into action points. Basically, you need actions. So there's three basic action types. You can explore, move, and recuperate. These are listed in the back of the book for reference. Each hero has a number of unique actions on their card. The first thing we're going to have to do is explore. So I'm going to explore with my Lord uh, Castellant. You make this action every hero is exploring unexplored exit. One of this is not connected to a chamber. After you spend your hero dice, so I'll spend my one dice. Whoop, just get rid of it. Um, we place... Uh, the top card of the exploration deck, which we know is the really good passage, and we place a doot doot doot, entry point for monsters. You read all the text and apply all of its effects. There's also little symbols on here and have other meanings. So you can see here the top one is the sheesh symbol, which means we're after that for the amulet. It'll appear in these two other amulet adventures as well. Now we read the text. The floor moved constantly in this place, clicking and whirling as interlocking spun apart in ever-changing configurations of crescent tiles and seamless meshing cogworks. We roll on a counter table B. So the encounter table is in the back of the adventure book, and we roll a d6 and see on table B, which is sort of like a mid-range monster, who's going to show up? It's going to be a Karak Acolyte per player, so six Karak Acolytes show up. By six, I mean four. The first one has to be face to face the exit, and the rest will surround him as close to the middle of the table as possible. So I mean entrance, the monster point. And there's our Karak Acolytes. So now that I've done my uh, my first one, which is the um, the explore, I can then do a move. I'm going to do a move and go forward. I have a move stat you can see of three. So I have to enter the room, so one, two. And now I can use my warding lantern, which costs me a six here, to try and stun all these acolytes. Now I have to roll a four plus to do it, but if I roll a six, they all take D3 wounds and I melt them. Six! No, I actually just fail and nothing happens. I also spend my last dice to make an attack. Now this is the last one, um, and it has to be in range, so I'm gonna use it to do a Castellan's Halberd. Um, it's on a four plus, I'll do damage two to this fella. I do, so he'll take two damage. Now his stat line is such that, so he has three vigor, a move of four and a four plus agility, which means he's still alive, but he's taken two wounds. Because I'm only damaged two. Castellan is gone, so it's over to Danny, and he begins to pick a hero to have attack. So the shard's gonna activate. Shard's gonna go, I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna use a six to cast Shadow Strike. All right. Place him anywhere head. on the board. Mm -hmm. And he gets bonuses to his strike when he does this. But that's why it needs a six to do it, because it's super powerful. So now your next attack, you're gonna spend another die. Yep, I'm gonna do a barbed blades. Okay, and that's a one plus attack. I miss. But it misses. I'm gonna do it again. And it misses. <laughs> Stop that! One. We need you, you're my fighter, you hit. So and this one does damage. One damage, okay. This guy's gonna have one, and he's got a couple left. Shard is out, so it's all you battle mage. Time to rickroll this guy. So you're gonna spend one of your amazing ones to go one, two. Oh, this is terrible. Well, we can't Mystic Shield, and we can't even use these for fireballs. I guess we go over here. One more move for that last move. Um, and we start stabbing you with the staff, because we have to. So we're gonna four plus this guy, he's got one wound left. Nope. We're gonna four plus the guy with one wound left. Yeah, and he dies. Bloop. Way to, way to kill steal there, Battle Mage. So the Battle Mage gains a renown, and he is the red dice, so he goes up one. He's got a five left, so he's gonna cast his Arcane Bolt. Um, he can't technically do it when he's engaged, though, so I guess we're not gonna do that. And we're gonna stab you with our staff again. And hits, so this guy's gonna take a damage. All the heroes are done, so it's just your Mist Weaver Shy. Shie, Sai. Yeah. Mist Weaver, I'll start with a move. Okay. She can move four, but I'll only go two. Sounds good. And you can move through your friends in this game. Yes. Then I'm going to uh, use a six to cast Bedazzle. Bedazzled? Which on a three plus stuns all the bad guys. Oh! But I can try it again. Do it again! Yes. Does. Now they're all stunned. So this is important because they're gonna get to go as soon as she finishes and that's going to be bad news bears for us But now they're stunned, which is good. We're testing dice. So I'm gonna take the four and I'm gonna cast Glitter Mist. Ooh, what's which, that do? Which will make it so if anyone attacking us rolls a four, it misses. It just misses. And only the number four, so fives and sixes will still hit, but fours will specifically miss. Got it. Putting our last dice, she's all finished, and now it's the monster phase. We have to resolve the stuns. The stun is super handy because what we would normally do is roll for a group um, action for these guys, see what behavior they take, but instead everyone who is stunned 
removes a stun counter and they don't act in the adversary phase and the heroes get to go again. So we go back to the destiny phase. We roll our destiny dice. Now come off. Let's see what we can see. Oh jeez. <laughs> we lost our three sixes and we got a mighty two and one in the destiny phase. We've got an unexpected event. We discarded sixes. Uh, so if you discard sixes or ones, you basically roll a uh, pair of d6s. One's high, one's low. And we're gonna generate a new passage in the encounter event to see what happens. So it's going to be passage 22. 22, terrible avian shrieks split the still air and the hunting cry of Christians, creatures twisted irredeemably by the will of Zinch. Barely did the champions have time to ready their blades before the strange beings were upon them, all clacking beaks and whirling silvered blades. Set up one Zangor per player as close to the possible to ex the nearest unexplored exit. Um, if there's no explored exit, set them up in the nearest portal instead. So, this is the unexplored exit. We should put down four. We only fit one, so only one shows up. We'll also come near the portal because they can move through friends. And that's that, I believe. We have to fight more Zangors. It's important to note we actually have to give different weapon types to as, as often as we can. So instead of de deploying like the same model over and over again, you have to deploy different types of the same model. And we're going to roll for some heroes. You're currently the lantern bearer or action holder. Um, and we'll roll right now see what we have. You actually don't roll until you activate somebody. I just discovered. But we'll roll now anyway, so you guys can see. So three, three, four, five. Shard's gonna go. Get him, Shard. All right. So I'll do a Reaper Gauntlet on a three plus. Okay. Into <laughs> well, it misses. Miss. So it's irrelevant. I'm gonna try it again. Hit the Zangor. <laughs> oh no! All these twos. Uh, all I can do now is bladed barbs. Okay. So hits. that hits. Do so I hit the wounded guy one. instead? Yeah. Okay, so that makes more have sense. Two or three. Two, eight, three each. Yeah. So you hit him one more time. Oh yeah. And you do it and you give him a renown. So he's dead, bloop, and you gain a renown. So up goes the Tenebral Shard. All right, let's do this, Mr. Lord Castello. You gotta free up your buddy. So you're gonna try and halberd this guy, whoop, because if we halberd him, then we free up the mage. Do, so two damage, so he'll die, and we'll gain a renown. And we're gonna start halberding this Zangor, because they look obnoxious. So four plus, he takes two damage. Zangors have five wounds, so I don't have to keep doing that. Yeah, might as well, hit him again. I don't. Hit him one more time. I don't. Ah, oh, so that's all my dice. I'm gonna take this one, boop, and leave you the two. And hit him. So I'll do two more wounds. So he's got four on him now, which almost kills him. Doing Miss Weaver. Okay, Miss Weaver's gonna start with Bedazzle again. Bedazzle. Three plus stun everybody. Do it. I love it. Everyone's stunned. That's good for us because this room got real full of monsters real fast. And I don't have any sixes to use my lantern. It's happened. Okay, so I'll do. Um... Illusionary Assault. On two. Three plus. On who? Oh, uh, this one. The one that, yeah, the kill steal me? I got you. I see how it is. I <laughs> killed Zangor. Whoop. Got one we left, so he's gone. And she'll get a renown. Whoop. And then you've got how many dice left? Two dice left. Two dice left. So I'm going to spend one to move. Okay. Take a walk. Four, two, three. And then my last one to just swing my Elven Blade. Elven Blading. Four plus. Gets it. One. Oh, and who's it on? This guy, right? Yaklate? Yeah. Sounds good. He's wounded. All right, it's Battle Mage O'Clock. Well, this one's not useful anymore. <laughs> I guess we use it to move. No, we don't use it to move. We'll use this 3 plus to do a Arcane Bolt into that Karak Acolyte on a 3. Nope, it misses. We'll use this 5 to do an Arcane Bolt on a 3. Hits! D3 wounds. Come on, 3 plus. Got him. Zap. He's dead. He's renown, uh, and then we'll do one more arcane bolt into him, and it misses. All I can do now really is move. So I guess I will. I stunned. He's stunned. I'm happy. I'm, I am where I am. I'm good. Move up and then smack him. Yeah, but then I can't bolt him later. I'm good. I'm happy where I am. And also, I'm big boy to walk up to that next turn. He's stunned. We're fine. Straight phase. Stun comes off the Zangor, and it's ready to rock and roll. A new activation. So we roll the destiny phase again. Destiny. It's gonna be five, four, two. Two's come off, five, four, one. Whoop, and double twos. Double twos would bring Pug in. He's one of the familiars, but we don't have any treasure cards. So there's no setting up. There's no treasure for him to come and steal. He's kind of like bog off the snotling in the old Warhammer quest that would steal the lantern. So I got lead this time. We're gonna have Lord Castell go. Whoop. He's now, yay, lantern time. Uh, we're gonna go and we are going to walk and go one, two. Bloop. We're gonna stab you with our halberd. We do, take two. We're going to, I wanna do it so bad. I'm gonna stun you with my warding lantern. 
<laughs> with a six. I don't, but he is stunned. So I, I do stun you, but I don't get the, um, the awesome super blast. And then I'm gonna spend, I really wanna do the healing light. But no one's wounded, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just stab you again. Stab you, four plus. I do, two more damage, so he's got one left. It's done with one left, and I am done. Ah, you know what? What the heck, I'm stealing this one. And I'm gonna stab you one more time, four plus. He dies! Blah! And we get her down. Lord Castellans is done, and the stabbing is complete. Are you, sir? Okay, so, um, I'll go for shard. Okay. Ooh, some ones. Well, at least we could use those for exploring. Right. <laughs> That's a good turn to explore. So, I'll spend the one to explore. Okay, so it that comes out and we get the library. librarian. So we read passage 76 for the librarian. As the golden portal swung wide, beyond was revealed a library that seemed stolen from some madman's dreaming. No ordinary repository of lore was this, but scattering of crumbling scrolls and forbidden tomes that ran riot in impossible profusion. As the champion's exclamations, the earth grew thick and then billowed a smoke from within the myriad colors shone bright. From that fume stepped the demonic librarian of the strange chamber, one digit laid upon his rubbery lips in a mocking appeal for silence. Set up a pink horror as close to the center of the table as possible. This is a librarian. He follows all the rules for pink horrors, but has some additional rules in the exploration card. The librarian is a pink horror with twice as much vigor. He acts at the same time as other pink horrors. Do not need to make any additional rolls for the behavior. Add one to the damage value for each of his weapons. When the librarian is slain, he is not replaced with any blue horrors. Instead, read passage 59. All right, so he's got eight vigor. He's a super pink horror. And reminds me a little bit of the librarian from Monsters University. Here it comes. So I'm gonna spend one to move. I can move four. One, two, three, four. And I'll do a bladed barbs on a two plus. Two plus. Does one damage. one damage? Ouch! Um, I'll do a Reaper Gauntlets for a three plus. Yep. So D three damage. Oh! Get them for two more. So it goes to three. You spend I'm one of these. Spend this four. Okay. Unlock the five for you to do another Reaper Gauntlets on a three plus. Three plus. No, no misses. Shard is done. That five unlocks, and now I get to activate my Mage. So I can't shoot through portals. So my Mage is gonna have to move. But let's see what he's got for dice right now. Well, we got that. Delicious six for some armor saves. So we're gonna go spend a two and walk. We can walk three. So one, two, three. I'm gonna spend the other two to walk again. We're gonna go one, two, three. So a four to use a uh, arcane bolt on a three plus. Zap! Get some D3 damage. Two. So he's gonna go to five. And a six to put up Mystic Shield just in case things go horribly wrong. And that's gonna give us all plus one armor save inside this tile. And then I spend this five over here to bolt him one more time. Nope, doesn't go off. That was the Mistweaver. Oh, I got some good dice. Not too shabby. Got some sixes in there. Yeah. So. We can try and stun him for sure. <laughs> Start with three to move. Yeah, you gotta move into the square. One, two. I'll just stay there. Okay. He needs a six for Glimmer Mist or for a Bedazzle. Yep, so you can stun him. Four plus. No. Nope. Oh, he's not stunned. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I'll use this bolts. Five. Might just kill him. He's got four wounds or five wounds on him. Uh, you do three, he's dead. Yeah. Okay. Three plus. Nope. nope. Uh oh. Three plus. Yep. D three. Five plus. No, oh, it's just one. Six wounds, and he's not stunned. All right. So after we have to roll for a pink horror and see what it does in the adversary phase. So roll on the chart here and see what he does. It's going to be. One and two, so bolts of azure flame. Each horror in the group attempts to move so it's not adjacent to any heroes, but can see at least one of them. Each horror in the group attacks the nearest hero they can see with blue fire uh, or its flickering blade if it's still adjacent. So, tries to break off, it has an agility of three. Huh. Nope. <laughs> so he's gonna try and stab you with his knives because you're adjacent still, because he couldn't break off. He's got two dice and they're damaged two on two plus. Blah! Take four damage. Armor save. Armor saves. So this gives me plus one. Yeah, you're getting plus one from the Lancer or from the Mystic Shield. Four plus. Four pluses. I save one. Okay, so take two one. damage, so it'll close off two of your damage tracks. And it's back over to a new turn, so let's roll the Dusty Nice and hopefully no more monsters show up. Oh no. Oh no, more monsters showed up. <laughs> Expected event, so column's gonna be 46. 
blinding light engulfed the champions, a searing luminescence that manifested without warning and burned away all sensation. For a span of time that might have been seconds or centuries, the champions hung in an eerie void before reality sprang back upon them in a fearsome roar. Remove all miniatures from the board except the runemark player's hero and set them aside. Starting with the runemark player and going clockwise, the player takes turns setting up a miniature that was removed. Players must be set up, miniatures may, must be set up in the same chamber as the runemark player's hero, or as close as possible. If there's no space in that chamber, once all miniatures are set aside, uh, have returned to the board, the round continues. So we, we basically get locked and trapped in time. So your rune mark this turn, as I was last turn. So your heroes stay where they were, and we move everybody else. Whoop, and then starting with you, you get to place them anywhere you want in this board. So we can place this guy anywhere we want. Yep, and then I place one. I think we're just gonna be like, Daddy's home. <laughs> and then you get to place my wizard. You just want to go back in a corner. Yeah, you're fine. Perfect. I like that like there was just like a temporal vortex and we all of a sudden were just fighting a Pangor. <laughs> and the Lord Salad showed up and was just like, no, it's Albert time. Uh, so you get to go first. Yep. So action dice. So the shard only gets two because he has two wounds. That's right, he's wounded. Six and two then, not too bad. It's good enough for me. Um, so I'm going to spend the six and do my favorite, Shadow Strike. Shadow Strike! Disappear, reappear wherever yep. I want. Into Murder Town. And then I'll do a bladed... Uh, you need two wins to kill him. Bladed Strike. Whoa, hits him. So it does two damage. Okay. And... Oh, because uh, you used the Shadow Strike? That's right. That's right. And then I'll kill him. We have to see what happens. He dies. We go to page 59 and see what happens. There came a sound of wet and monstrous ripping as the librarian bodily tore in two, where once stood a great pink-flushed being, now two smaller blue simulacra took its place, grumbling in great indignation. For all their bluster about being feared, uh, being feared champions, and told them a precious secret, an ancient incantation that would distill the blind light of sorcery for a time. Even as the champions puzzled over the silver uh, sliver of lore, the demons vanished, returning to shimmering smoke once they came. The runemark player takes an expiration card called the librarian until the end of the trial. Its purpose will become apparent later. Renown, whoop, for having killed him. All right, anything else you want to do? I don't have any dice left. All right, happy where you are then. So let's have the Lord Castellant go and see what he gets for actions. Ugh, well, I've got a six on the board at least, so we can still do the healing. So let's go and take a walk with one. One, two, wait, where's our door? Oh, sorry, we're already there. One, <laughs> and we're done. Uh, we'll spend this one to explore. So let's see what the next card is. Perilous footing! Oh no, it was more treacherous than walking on shifting sands. Coins and detritus spilled away in rattling showers with every step. Each time a hero moves in this space, um, they must reduce the score of their lowest hero dice by one, and if the dice is a one, remove it and replace it with a wound marker. We slip and slide through coins everywhere. And then we have to roll on encounter table B. Table B is going to be... a one! A Kirk Acolyte per player and one pink horror. And there they are! Team Murder Squad. So, uh, I kind of just want to wait for them and fight them through the door because I feel like going in there and potentially getting wounded is a terrible idea, so we should just let them come to us. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to spend this six off the board and put up my healing light, and that's going to bring you back a wound. Boop. Um, and then I'm just going to... I can't stun the board. Uh, I guess I could stun the board. I'll use one to move. In. And I'm going to stab this Karak Acolyte. Oh, sorry, these are Zangors. I grabbed the wrong guys. So I'll stab a Karak Acolyte with my Halberd. Ah, you know what? I'll, you know, I can't use my Lantern. It needs to be a six. So I'll stab with the Halberd. See what I can do. Ha! Hit him. Takes two damage. It's over to you, sir. Ready to rock and roll. Okay, Shard. Shard's got an action back. Wait, no, Shard already went. Shard did go, yep. There we go. The Shy gets a six, which is good, because we can maybe do the Glimmering. Spend two to move. Okay. One, One, two, three, four. You can go diagonal into the room if you want to do the thing. Because isn't it in an area? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Four. And you can use your area thing with the six. Six on a three plus. Cranks yeah, it! Yeah, everybody's stunned. Stab. Elven Blade. Okay. Uh, this four. guy's got one wound left, so you want to stab him. Sure. Hits yep. him. He's dead. So you get a ram. And last one. I'm going to do Glimmer Mist. So that way, if anyone attacking us rolls a three, it... Oh, it's whatever die you place. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, So all the threes will go away. All right, so it's up to the battle mage to start doing some zapping while these guys are all stunned. Uh, we didn't get any sixes, so that's actually a good thing. And everything's a three uh, or better, which means we can start spending these dice to do some zaps. So let's do a zap here. Uh, we'll zap this guy on a three. Hits. D3 wounds. One. So he's got one wound on him. We'll zap him again. 
Hits! D3 wounds. Sorry, dice comes off. Kills him. Blah. Zap the next one down. Doesn't hit. And then zap him one more time. Hits! D3 wounds. 5, 6, he's dead! Nope, just does 2. And that's it for round. Everybody pulls a stun off because we've stunned the room. And they will not get to activate this turn, so it's back to Destiny Dice. Come on, no more weirdness. And... Oh, again with the weirdness. And we have one six available. So an unexpected event happens again, but uh, good old, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pug does not show up because again, we don't have any treasure cards. So uh, let's see what happens with the random event. It's gonna be paragraph 54. Amidst the coiling vapors, a figure moved. A stranger approached the shimmering mark. Weapons were drawn ready to get serendipity this was. Stepping into light came not a monstrous foe, but another lost soul seeking freedom from this place. Pick an unused hero card at random. That hero joins the party as a companion. Set them up as close to the runemark player as possible. So we have the four painted heroes here. We'll grab one at random. Now a companion is controlled by the runemarked player. He rolls his action dice as normal, but everything except for the highest will be turned to a one. Um, so you can only do basic actions, basically. He never gets renown or he gets treasure. And if another unexpected event occurs, he slips away because his plot in the story is done. So we'll grab one at random. It's going to be... The Excelsior War Priest is going to show up, and he's got his little Griffhound with him too. Because most of his dice are once, it's going to be hard to have Sigmar's Boon or Command to go off, unless he's just smiting people with his Warhammer or moving around. Um, that's it. I'll set up as close to one of my heroes as possible, so he just jumps in front of my Lord Castellant, and so does his Griffhound. And it's like, hey everybody, let's go fight. He won't activate until after everybody else is gone, so it's going to have to be our guys going first. So I think I will activate my Battle Mage actually, and have him go first. He's gonna get a six, a bunch of twos, and a five. So unfortunately, this isn't gonna be super useful. I'm gonna use one of these to move. One, two, three. Uh, and actually, sorry, I just realized this would drop off, wouldn't it? Yeah. At the end of this turn, that's right, because we've unlocked another thing. Um, and I don't know if I wanna move again. I think I do. We're gonna go one, two, three into the room. And that way I can use this six for Mystic Shield. Everybody's gonna get plus one armor save in the same square as me. And we'll do a zappy bolt into this guy. Hits, D3 wounds, he's only got one left. He's toast. All right, it's over to you, sir. Okay, so, ooh, I'll start with the shard. Okay, it's got three action dice. It's gonna get a one, a three, and a five. So I'm gonna use this one to heal myself. Sounds good. Cause you can always spend a die to try and take a respite, take a breather. Yep. And then, We've got the pink whore and one of the orc dudes left. You know what? I'm going to use this six. Okay. To do shadow strike. Shadow strike it is. Jump onto the pink whore. Yep. And then I'll use my five to do reaper gauntlets on a three plus. Reaper gauntlets. Nope. nope. Uh oh. <laughs> it's okay. I'll do a bladed barb on a two plus. Okay. Hits. Does damage. One damage. That. All right. Lord Castellan's going to go. Let's see what his action dice are. Well, we got a six, which is important for that healing lantern. Not that we need it now, because you, you healed yourself. <laughs> so I guess we'll use uh, one to walk. And we'll go one, two, three over to here. And then one is stabbed with a halberd into him. Misses. Another one is stabbed with a halberd into him. Hits. Two damage, so he's dead. So we'll gain our renown. And then we're going to use one for the lantern. Uh, and we won't do healing light. We'll do the warding lantern, see if we can stun this guy. Four plus. We don't. Finally, it's the Excel. Sorry, it's over to you. You got the shade left. My bad. War priest goes afterwards. Action dice. Some twos and some fours. Two. Throw on some bolts. Illusionary assault. Okay. Four plus hits. D three wounds. One. One. All right. He's got four. Try it again. Hits. D three. Five plus. Kills him. Gets replaced by two little blue ones. Ouch. We are blue horrors. Want to move? One, two, three, four. Get next to him. Elven blade him. Elven blade on a four plus. Four plus. No. Nope. All right, War Priest, what you got? Whoa, we got some sixes, but everything else is going to be a one. Stabbing. Going to Warhammer this guy. Uh, he needs a three plus. Nope. Again, three plus. Nope, you're the worst War Priest. Three plus. Yeah, he's going to stab that guy. Takes a wound. Whoop. Uh, he's only had one, sorry. Oh, no, he's got two now. No, that was the one from the... That was one from the pink whore. And we use this to command the Griffon on 2+. plus. He does. Uh, so the Griffon gets to make a hunt. So move the Griffon and then make an adjacent attack with it. He doesn't need to move, so he's going to attack this guy. Uh, and he attacks with a... 
Uh, two dice, four plus, he'll take a wound. He does, then I'll kill this blue horde, turn to a spark. Uh, and then he'd get a renown if he was not a fake hero. It's the end of the turn, I believe these two are gonna come off. Just one. Just one, okay, so we have these two in the back. Um, and we are going to have the monsters go, and we have to roll on the behavior table. See what all the horrors do. It's gonna be a six, vicious capering. Each horn in the group moves towards the nearest hero, uh, and then they attack it with either blue fire or its flickering blade. So, flickering blade, two dice. Uh, it's going to be on, for the little guys, a four plus. So, do we randomize who attacks? Mm -hmm. right, well, I'm rune marks, so I'm gonna have to attack the fake hero. <laughs> Hey, look, he did some damage, but it doesn't make a save, but we've got our, uh, Accessory War Priest has a six plus armor save. That's a terrible save. Takes two damage. She also just get eaten, unfortunately, by some horrors. <laughs> um, and then this little guy, uh, we'll have him fight, I guess, my Celestant, because he's a tank. Let's see if we can hit him. Hits once, four plus armor save. Makes it, he's fine. They've done their stabbing for the turn, so it's back to the Destiny phase. Let's see if the War Priest disappears. He does, another expected event happens, all the ones go away, and the War Priest takes off, as he's like, what, these things are dangerous, peace out like being stabbed multiple times by a little spider guy. Um, and we will now do some actions. You are the current lead. Ah, uh, we forgot our perilous footing. I, I will have to make sure we do that again if somebody moves. I think we were spending our one dice, mostly to move in anyway, but we would be taking wounds if we moved in without one dice. Mm. Who's going first? Shard's gonna go. Okay. Like oh, don't spend those to fight. Don't don't walk. <laughs> Just her stabbing. Yeah, I'm gonna do some bladed barbs. Two okay. plus on this guy. Yeah, so that'll hit. Hit for one damage. Instead, gets around. Um, same type of attack. Yep, on, on him. One. Hits. It's one damage. Owned. So the ones are gone. I'll do a reaper gauntlet on a three plus. Hits him for D three. You only need one. Boop. He's dead. One of these, you wanna try and stab it? Yep, still got some more attacks to do. It's only got one wound. I'm gonna do another, actually I'm gonna use this two. Sure. To do a bladed barb, on two, two plus. Two Dead. One last die. Yep, but because I wounded three adversaries, oh, that's I right. two extra one for now. Yes, because you went on a killing spree. Yep. And then, my last dice, I guess I'll just, I'll move to the door. Okay, you don't have any dice to go to ones, so you're fine. Well, nobody's wounded. Do we just keep going? <laughs> uh, we can do the respite phase. We can do some respite phase if we want, actually, yep. And just do some some searches, try to get some treasure cards. So I'm gonna burn my remaining actions with both my heroes. You're gonna burn yours with yours. We're gonna do the respite phase, and we'll move this up a little bit, because our doorway is going to be, whoop, up higher for the next thing. And that means we roll a die and add the number of treasure cards we're all carrying. And a nine plus is an ambush. Otherwise, we get to roll, and on a four plus, we do our basically a respite. On a four plus, we get a treasure card, and on a six, we get back a wound. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, skill cards, not treasure cards. None of us got any skill cards yet, so there's no way for us to get the ambush to happen. But we do roll a die, uh, get back D3 wounds, and if the die is a four plus, we get a treasure card too. So nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> no treasure, we just stand there. Um, and we'll start a new destiny phase. All right, let's see what the destiny is. Uh, random events, and then five, four, two. Stop with those Ooh, ones. Seriously. Let's see what it is, 31. In every footfall, the champions become ever more convinced they're being followed. Small and twisted figures scuttle in the dark, skittering along ceilings and flicking the shadows. Moment by moment, the tension swelled, the muffled cackles and frantic shushing less restrained until the champions felt they could endure no more. It was then, with a great shriek, that the scuttling sprang from their ambush. Vile nets of sticky strands spotted from above and snaring the champions as the grots burst forth hiding for attack. Each hero is stunned, then roll a die and place that many grot scuttlings next to the board. Starting with the runemark player and going clockwise, each player sets up one of the scuttlings as close to a hero as possible until they've all been set up. E6 scuttlings. Five, and we all gain a stun counter. Place five scuttlings. Uh, so I have it, so I'm gonna put one here, and then you get to put one and go back and forth. And they have to be as close to heroes as possible that we control. Get him. <laughs> get him, Lord Castellan. All right, so the scuttlings are kind of obnoxious. They only get um, one, or sorry, they get two attacks of their stabbers, but they get plus one to hit for every stun counter we have. So this is the whole point of their ambush. Um, we get to go first, though. And I have the lead, so I'm going to have my Lord Castellans go and start trying to murder them, because they only have two damage each. Reactions, let's get some murder on. Oh, jeez. Well, we're not using the lantern. <laughs> um, and I'm going to start off by buying this one. Whoop, use that two up. And I'll stab this guy to four. Go away. <laughs> he kills one. Stab the next one on a four. Go away. <laughs> he stabs another one. Uh, murder rampage. Stab the next one, four plus. Nope. 
Uh, and then this is the last one. Go away, kills three. Pull off the stun the end of my activation. Uh, Renown, if three more adversaries, I stun three more adversaries with the Warding Lantern. So it's only, the, the Halberd murdering does not gain me any extra Renown. But I get three Renown from stabbing guys, which is pretty cool. Reaper's gonna go. Uh, it's not too shabby, got the six that you want, and then two threes. Dazzling. Gets it on a six, everybody's stunned. Take that, Skullings. You jerks, ambush us. Halberd man's not joking around, neither's the Mistweaver. Uh, you got two left. Yep. So I'll do uh, Stabify. Elven Blade. Okay. Right, so Perfect. one wound. Yep. I assume on the one that's not next to the other Tinkerbell Shard. And then Elven Blade again. Nope. You want to try and do it one more time with the die? Yeah. Get that kill? You do. Yeah, so he's dead. To be fair, if I were a bunch of goblins and I just ambushed this posse of heroes, I'd probably feel pretty stupid. <laughs> Battle Mage is gonna go. Uh, he gets some uh, fives and a one. I don't like that one, because that one means that I, I, I don't want to move and it'll wound me. Um, so I'm going to burn this one for a bolt into him. Goes off. Uh, D3 wounds. One wound, gets wounded once. And we'll bolt him again. This one. Hits, D3 wounds. Goes off, just zaps him, get a renown. I'll use this last one to move, because that way I can't drop my die. Go one, two, three, and be done. Go, so we're gonna open the door. You got your t shard, the sure. can. Yeah, still have three. Yep. Four, do it with the one, I guess. Yeah. So one, I'll do explore. Okay, explore, what card do we get? The abandoned nest. This chamber bears a bore a beast's musky stink. Claw, marked, mar claw marks marred the walls and gold glinted amidst the bones in the floor and counter table C. Players can make this action while inside the table. Search on a one, so you can search on a one plus. Roll a die on a one, set up D3 Grot Skellings in the portal on a four to six. Place a stun marker on this card. The player that places the third stun marker can draw a treasure card. Counter C, it's a big thing. Four. Ah, uh, D6 Grotz got links. We've, we've been down this road, we know how this goes. Two of them, you jerks. Well, the Grotz have like, infested this area. Oh no, you found our house! Red on the card. Oh, I see, so this is blocking drain. This is something I've encountered before, actually. So I can't shoot through this and neither can you. So that red thing there is a pillar. That means this is a super tall pillar. So it's blocking, or it might even be a pit. So I'll start with a move. Okay. One, two, yep, and start stabbing. Creeper gauntlet, so might as well. Move. Hit. Does, D3, three plus. You did. You get her down. Oh, you've almost lapped. Okay, so then I'm gonna use the last one. Yeah. Do it again. Nope. No. All right. So new turn, uh, and we have dropped off the furthest card, and we're gonna roll our destiny dice now and see. No more random events. Yay! We did get double threes. And skill cards. Blot would show up, which is the book familiar, but we do not. So. We're safe from Blot for a turn, and we have a decent pool of dice. Uh, you are the lead this time, sir. All right. So if you want to continue on your murder rampage, yep. you can. Start with the shard. Okay, see what he gets. Uh, not too shabby, All six, right. five, oh. five, three. Start with the gauntlet. <laughs> Reaper gauntlet on a three plus. No, again. Same, same. Hits, yeah, D3 three wounds. Three. No, it doesn't kill him. One. Only got a wound left. Uh, bladed barbs on a two plus. Hits, yeah. does a wound, Whop. you get renown, and you have leveled up, so you get to draw a skill card. You draw two cards, pick which one you want, so what'd you get? We got Vengeful Strike and Evasive. I'm guessing this is the one you're taking. <laughs> when you roll a six. You have the Swift keyword and the Bladeborn. Bladeborn keyword, which means these are both basically built for you. Um, and we'll read through them and tell you what they do. So Vengeful Strike is if your opponent attacks you and you make a saving roll of six, uh, you can make a one action. And if you're Bladeborn, which you are, you can make any weapon action back, which is pretty cool. So it lets you fight during your, uh, the monster turn. And then Evasive, before making a save roll, roll a die. And if you roll higher than the attack roll, the dodge aside uh, and the attack has no effect. If you're a swift, you will also dodge if you roll the same as the attack roll. So that's super handy. Now you only have a five plus save normally, so you're gonna pick the evasive because that's just gonna keep you in the game longer. Um, and Vengeful Strike will go back into the pile. And we'll shuffle that up later. The six, take a walk. And go stand next to the door. Oh, we'll have the Lord Castellan go, because why not? Let's see what he gets for his actions. Some big numbers, no whammy. And we're gonna spend this three to walk. That's gonna turn this into a two, because we're in the coin room. And we'll go one, two, three, be here. And we're gonna search. Yeah. We get a stun counter on the room. We're gonna search. Yeah, we got a stun counter on the room. One more time. 
We're gonna search. I don't know what that does. It's not a one, so no scuttling show up. I'm gonna spend this four to do it one more time. I need a four plus. Give me that treasure card. Yeah! So three sun counters come on, and I find the treasure in the abandoned nest. So I get to draw a treasure card. So I've found the Ring of Celerity. Add one to your hero's move while you have this card. You can discard this card at any point during your turn to roll up to two dice, two hero dice that you've already used that turn and return them to your hero card so I can buy more dice wow. with it. That's pretty awesome. So, so treasure cards seem like they're more expendable in this version of the game than the original game so that we'll kind of be burning through them as we play. But the nest is now empty and it is over to you, sir, with your Mistweaver Shia. Sigh. Twos and threes and sixes. I'll just use that two immediately to move. Okay. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Uh, you know what? I need to do search as well. Go for it. Go for four. Cross show up. Cross show up. Oh boy. D3. We get D3. One. <laughs> he gets placed uh, as close to the portal as possible. So he has to be here. Stabbing. So, illusionary. No, he's next to me, so I'll do Elven Blade 4 plus. Nope. And again. Nope. Oh. Uh oh. Um, I'll kill with the wizard. Yeah. Just... <laughs> I'll see what the Battle Mage does. Battle Mage is coming in. Rut row to get some bad dice. Or not, not great dice. But at least we can use that one to move. Find the one. This becomes a one. Whoop. And we go one, two. And be done. Um, and then we'll spend this to bolt you. We do, D3. I takes one. We'll spend this to bolt again. Hits, kills him no matter what. Get her now. The last one to move and go one, two. And that'll set the turn. So we cleared it off. This is gonna disappear. Not yet. Oh, not yet. It says right, not yet. Well, you know what? I'll just explore right now because I might as well. So we'll spend this die over here. Explore. Uh, and we place the next card into the deck. Searing beams. Passage 81. This is the boss room. So no matter how many cards are left, this is where we're gonna actually fight the boss. Found the final encounter in the first mission. Stepping through a shimmering blue haze, the champions emerge in a profane temple of Zinch. Um, this is a blocking statue. You can't move through it. And then we set up these two pillars that are blocking as well. Um, in the place of worship, they beheld a great statue of a demon lord whose avian gaze bespoke knowledge of dark and terrible secrets. At the statue's feet, the champion saw two great crystal prisms, each mounted upon an intricate clockwork dais. From these prisms spilled a searing light. Each beam leapt out like a searing river of power to scorch the walls black. Here, it seemed, was a puzzle of sorts. Set up the two prism markers as shown. Each prism projects a beam that extends outwards until it hits an obstacle. To begin with, each beam is projected at the closest edge of the chamber. These effects are detailed in the exploration card. A hero with the exploration card titled The Librarian can make this action. Chant 3 plus until the end of the hero phase. The beams are deactivated and have no effect. So you can chant when we go into that room, but right now, uh, the portals, these are the beams right now, yeah? These are the beams. No, no, sorry. Oh, the portals are here for the monsters. I'm just seeing where the beams actually go. So the, currently the beams are facing out like this. Now the beams themselves... If a miniature touches a beam, it suffers D3 wounds. If adversaries will avoid this if possible, heroes can make this action. Rotate 4 plus. Rotate an adjacent prism marker up to 90 degrees. Its beam inflicts D3 wounds on any model it touches as it moves. If the beam touches the statue, go to passage 49. If both touch the same go time, go to, <laughs> go to 57. This is literally a Resident Evil like, like map that I played with the mirrors. I think this is Resident Evil 4, where you're starting to shoot the lasers around. Oh my god, I've totally played this map before. <laughs> Twice on encounter level B to see who's chanting in the temple. So B is gonna be a Karak Acolyte per player and one pink horror. And then the same thing. So we've got eight Karak Acolytes and two pink horrors. All right, so we've set up. Here's the posse of monsters we have to kill. Now what's awesome is we can rotate this beam to like fan into these guys if we want, but it is the end of the action right now and the adversaries are gonna move. So you have one six left on the board if you wanna spend it to jump. Look, he's going over there. All right, and then everybody moves. Karak Acolytes are gonna go first, and they're going to draw their blood. Each Acolyte moves towards the nearest hero, then attacks with whichever weapon is in range, then roll a die and add one to the result for each win they cause. On the six or more, set up a pink horror next to the nearest portal. They will act in this phase unless pink horrors have already acted. Uh, all the pink horrors are already on the table, so we'll see what happens. So let's go for the Karak Acolytes. Um, I get to move the first one, I guess. We're gonna send him after my, my boy here. Uh, and he's gonna go one, and then try and fight him. Who attacks fours? No, that's the mage one. Oh, that's the mage one, okay. So, looking for fours. 
One hit, four plus save from my Lord Celestin. Nope, he's gonna fail, take a wound. Things are going wrong with Lord Castellans. Uh, so the next one's gonna go. Uh, you get to control him. No, it's all you. Oh, it's all me, that's right. Uh, we'll go one, I guess, and have him fight the Battle Mage. Fours, nothing. Uh, we'll have the next one go. He'll go, well, he's gonna have to go towards him because they're in each other's way now. Go over here and fight you. Fours. One hits, uh, so you have to roll a six to save it with your dodge, and then a five to save it with your armor. Six, does it, just dodges out of the way. Yep, that skill was worth it. <laughs> uh, then this one's gonna go, he's gonna go one, two, three, and try and fight you as well. He's got the two daggers, so he, he makes four attacks. There's the, the beam there, so he can't stand Oh, that's right, he can't do it. So he's gonna try and shoot you with a bolt then. Blast Sorcerer's Bolt, five, so dodge it on a five, and then armor it on a five. Nope, armor. Nope, takes a wound. These guys end up doing much the same thing because they can't, this is closest. He's gonna move to here and he's gonna try and bolt the wizard on a three. Does, and then it's uh, Battle Mage has a save of six plus. He does, he makes it. This guy will do the same thing. Closest is gonna be the wizard, so comes up, tries to bolt him, three plus. Does, wizard saves it on a six. Nope, wizard's wounded. Uh-oh, uh, this fella is gonna go one, two, and try and bolt the wizard, because he's closest. On a three, and then on a six. Nope, takes another wound. Oh, now with a whiz. Most of the orc dudes, uh, still close to the wizard, and he's gonna try and bolt him on a three. He does, six plus save. We're good. The horrors do. Two, bolts of azure flame. Each horror in the group attempts to move, so it's not, not adjacent to a hero but can see one, and then each horn in the group attacks the nearest hero, they can see a blue fire. So, it's gonna be blue fire, so that will be on a three damage two with one die. Uh, so he can't see the nearest guy right now, so he's gonna step over here and then try and blue fire you. Actually, sorry, he'll actually have to step over here to do it, because he can't go diagonally through that. Uh, and it'll be on a four it'll hit, because he, oh, sorry, a three it'll hit, because he's a pink, misses. Uh, he's one, two, three, one, two, three, he'll just, Shoot the wizard. This is. Right, here we go. Destiny phase. No new events, please. I like it. Oh, no. Double threes. We only got one six, but that at least means that for sure we can get my lantern off to heal. Um, and then it's going to be. You have the lead. And we get a random event. Now we do have treasure cards. Double two. So double threes is going to be that Pug shows up. Sorry, Blot shows up. That's two or more skill cards, so we're okay. So Blot does not show up. Uh, you have to have at least two. And then it's going to be uh, you who gets to go first, sir. So who would you like to have go first? Shard's going to go first. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. It's okay. It's okay. We're still good. We're still good. I'm going to activate this dude. Okay. I'm gonna, with my four plus, I'm gonna turn it. It's a you need no, you need a four plus die to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna use my four. Oh, you're gonna use your four, okay? Yeah. So, so it's gonna hit these two guys, taking d3 wounds each. So roll for him on a five plus. He's dead. Kills him. Brap. Need a renown on the horror. He's got four wounds. Takes two. Dot dot. First one to heal. Yeah. Yep. So you take a wound off, and then you're gonna stab that little dude. On a two plus. Two plus. One Takes two. a wound. Ouch. All right, Lord Celestin time. He's only got three actions. Uh, they're not great. <laughs> but, whoop. We're gonna use the six up here to put up healing light, whoop, which will put a wound back on the battle mage and take a wound off him. Then one to move, because he needs to, because he's not currently adjacent, because he's not through a door, so he's gonna go one, two. And then he's gonna start stabbing people. <laughs> uh, so he's gonna halberd this, uh, he's gonna halberd the guy next to the mage on a four. Nope. He's gonna halberd the guy next to the mage. Yes, takes two dudes. And whoop. Going for a six. Okay, so nope. doesn't get one, so we don't get to do any glimmering, but you can bolt a whole bunch of people. So yep, I'll do illusionary assault. Start with the, the wounded one. Guy. Yeah, of course. Three plus. Handsome, doesn't matter what you roll to wound, because he's only got one left. So you get a renown. Yep, two renown because uh, my attack roll for a illusionary assault was a six. Oh nice. So you zap him. He's gonna shoot this pink whore because you can see him. No. Nope. Ah. I'm gonna try one more time. Okay. Hits. Yep. D3. Actually, you get another right now. You get another right now because the attack rolls a six. D3. No, it's only one. Needs one more. One's ah. better than none. Gonna burn it. Uh, and we're gonna see what we see with Mr. Battle Mage. He's got three dice because he's still slightly wounded. 
Uh, he gets a six though, which is handy, which means you get that shield off. I'm gonna put the shield up, no matter what, so everyone gets plus one save in the same square. Uh, and then we are going to, I guess, staff stab somebody? Or we could try and move. I can't miss bolt when I'm base to base anyway, so I'm gonna try and break off. Five plus. I do! So we're gonna go one, and stand over here. Last one, I'm gonna try and bolt. Oh, I guess this orc guy right here. Let's see if we can get him. We do! And... Kill him! Three. Yeah! So I get two renown because I also did both my spells in the same turn. Oh, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Let's roll for some behavior. Let's see what happens with the Auric Acolytes. Four Karak Acolytes. Uh, there is no escape. Each Acolyte moves towards the nearest hero. Then each Acolyte attacks the nearest hero with whatever weapons in range. Basically the same as before, but before we couldn't roll for a pink horror because all the pink horrors were already on the table. So uh, he will go first, I guess. Well, you can do them in your order. Yeah, sure. You want. Well, attack me first. Sure. You want to roll it off? He's got the big spear, so he's going to be hitting uh, two dice on a four plus, but he's damaged two because he's got the glaive. Uh, misses twice. Who wants to go next? We'll have him attack. Okay, so he's going to attack my uh, my big boy. So he's going to hit on, and he's got, sorry, not a spear, he's got a shield, which means... Well, he has an extra vigor, that's cool. Um, so you got two attacks on fours. And hits once. Three plus armor. We're good. Go. Yep, go stand in front. Try and stab him. So two attacks on fours. Three plus armor. We tank it. He goes in. Yep. Uh, he can't move when he's in base space already, can he? Uh, well, let's just leave him here anyway. Yeah, because Agility's dead. Well, I think because Agility you have to do a break-off test. But he's damaged too, which is scary. Fours. Uh-oh. Threes. We're good. This guy's going to move towards the closest hero, and he's going to zap me with a bolt. Which he does. But I save it. Alright, it's horror times. Let's see what they do. It's going to be a six. Vicious capering. Each one of the group moves towards the nearest hero. Each one uh, then attacks him with either blue fire or flickering blade, whichever's in range. Now your movement is five, which means you're going to be trying to stab, which is actually good because that's lower damage. <laughs> he's going to move towards him. Um, he'll hit with two attacks, hitting on twos. Now uh, you dodge the first one on a two plus and the second one on a five plus. You dodge the first one, second one. Armor save. Nope, so you take one damage. Uh, and then this guy's gonna try and go. Uh, he's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, so he's gonna go towards you. One, two, and he's gonna try and zap you. Uh, so he gets one dice for his blue fire on a three. Uh, you dodge it on a four plus. You do. Definitely the evasive was the card to take. <laughs> so uh, that is the end of their turn. Let's roll some destiny dice and see what happens. All right, destiny. Nice. Okay, so double fours come off. But we got five, two, one, which means no random happenings at least. Freak shows up and he hugs this guy who's not wounded because he has the highest vigor. Um, and there's minus one to hit for any attack rolls in the same room as Tweak because he just like talks. These little guys aren't actually adversaries. What they are is little uh, familiars of the, um, the what you call the Gaunt Summoner that you can try and catch. If you move into a square with it, sorry, if he's the last thing alive on the board, then he just runs away. Um, if he, however, is uh, moved into while stuff is still alive, you roll, you roll off basically, and if you roll higher than whoever else is rolling against you, you grab him. If you fail, he runs away and just curses you and you get his bane, but if you grab him, you gain his boon. So there's bonuses and penalties if you try and catch the guy. Right now though, just for being on the board, everyone's minus one to hit because he's just like, chatting it up with everybody and <laughs> making things difficult so i currently have the lead oops from this one um and we're gonna activate the lord castell at first and he's gonna try and go on a murder spree again oh yeah baby <laughs> let's do this start halberd stabbing uh so we're gonna stab who's wounded already no, i think oh you kill you sniped whoever was wounded so we'll stab him uh, i will stab glaive guy actually because he's highly dangerous <laughs> we hit him uh takes two damage oh no wait that's on a four i don't hit him try again Four. Nope. Oh, I don't want to burn these sixes, so I'm going to burn this one up here, which locks this five for you. On a four. Oh my gosh, you're the worst. I'll burn the two then. On a four. Yeah, so we do two damage. I'll burn the six. We do, so he's dead. Again, Renown. Uh, and then I'll put this into the healing light, which will heal the battle mage. All right, he's going to go. Get some decent dice. Spend two to heal. Or you could jump, which could be handy. I'm going to start by spinning the two to heal. Okay. Then I'm going to spin this five to turn this. Okay. 
Will it zap me through the door? No, I'm turning it back this way. Okay. So it hits the guy. So it hits him? Okay, so he'll take D3 wounds. Uh, and then he's standing in it when he appears, so he'll take D3 wounds again. So he takes two and dies, uh, and then becomes two blue horrors. Oop, but one of those blue horrors will take D3 wounds immediately. Because he's standing in a laser. Takes one. Whoop. Can just turn it again, it's spending that five, yep. Five to turn it. So this one just dies and becomes a spark. Takes D3, dies and becomes a spark. Uh, and you gain two renown. You've killed one, two, three this turn as well, so you'll get another renown. Yeah. And he's gonna shadow strike. So just disappear and teleport yep. anywhere I want. That's theirs probably best. No, theirs probably best. Yeah. You can't you can't turn it this way without killing me, but you can turn it the well, other way if you want. I, mm, it's gonna go through and hit me, right? It's gonna hit him. Okay. My wizard. <laughs> this way, this way, no bueno. Um, and that's you done. Are there, okay, tired of being melee. Sounds good. All right, I guess it's battle mage time. Let's go battle mage. Get some work done. Ooh. Well, no awesome mystic shield for us this turn, but we can start zapping some people. Uh, and I guess we'll zap. Guys aren't super wounded, so I guess we'll start zapping this guy. Mmm, this guy. Hits, D3 wounds, three plus, five plus, kills him. Blah. He just almost got a thing. Uh, we'll try and zap the next one. And we will zap, nobody's wounded really. I can't see the sparks. So I guess we'll zap the big flame guy. Hits him, D3, wounds, two. So he's got two on him. Oh, I can't even see him. Never mind. It would have to be this guy. I realized the door's right here, and that's the middle point between our two lines. That's a wall. Good search, but it would bring in scuttlings. So I guess I'm just gonna move to here for one and be done for my last one. Where's he gonna go? <clears throat> Decent roll. That's a lot of sorcerer's blasts. Zapping that pink horror. Evolutionary assault. Okay. okay. A plus. Nope. Nope. Second one. Gets yes. him. D3 wounds. Does two, he's got two left. You could snipe this guy for one wound or... I'll go for the pink. Gonna kill, kill the pink orb, sounds good. Misses, last one. Last one I'm gonna do Glimmer Mist. Okay. So all of us are protected. By fives. Yes. Rolls of five will be discarded attacking people in the same chamber. So that's end of round for us. And that means the baddies attack. Oh no, the baddies, this thing just... Oh no wait, the laser's over here now. Hmm. Well, let's do the character acolytes first and see where they go. Uh, they're going to roll a six and fall back. If there are twice as many heroes on the board as there are acolytes, each acolyte moves towards the nearest portal. An acolyte that ends its move in a portal flees. Each acolyte still on the board, then attacks nearest hero with whatever weapons in range. Uh, there are not twice as many heroes. There's three acolytes and there's four heroes. So you just attack the nearest guy in range. You start stabbing over here with shield guys. So first shield guy. Uh, hits once, uh, don't know five, so nothing gets discarded. Purple safe. Nope, wounds Lord Celestin. Next one attacks Lord Celestin. Fours. Hits once, four plus armor. He's good. And the last one's gonna try and zap, I guess, Lord Celestin, because you can see him. Uh, and switch blast on a three. Nope. And we roll for the pink, oh, all the horrors now. That's gonna be a six, which is going to be vicious caperings. Each one of the group moves towards the nearest hero, and then attacks with whatever weapon is in range. Uh, so nearest hero is going to be for him, this guy, Warp. and to try and stab you with his blades. Mm -hmm. uh, the stabbings are on, he's a pink horror, it's going to be two pluses. Uh, so you need to dodge on a four and dodge on a six. So the four fails, the six fails two. Four saves, five plus. Fails them both, takes two damage, uh oh. So little guys, uh, the nearest guy is probably going to be over here actually, uh, but they can't move through the laser, so they're going to go one... Sorry, one, two, three, over to here, and try and blast him. He's gonna die after this. On a five plus, he'll hit him. He fails, and he just goes away because they explode when they do it. And then he's gonna go one, two, three, and do the same thing. On a five, misses, and then they go away. They extinguish themselves. And you actually don't get renowned for killing these guys either. We got that wrong. All right, well, that's the end of them. Uh, let's see what we can see for the destiny roll. Destiny! Nothing happens except the sixes go away. Random events from the double sixes and... A, oh Jesus, could be a bad thing. From nowhere it came, little more than a blur of black cloth and poison blades, the scaven leapt and rolled, darted and dodged, and these champions might just as well have been swung the weapons at smoke. The Death Runner's mad red eyes fixed on its victims and it lunged in to strike the killing blow. 
Set up the Skaven Deathrunner at the portal. It's close to the remote player's hero, so it's blocked here, so it's gonna stand up right here. And now we have a proper boss fight. Obnoxiously, he appears. He has, he is crazy. He's got movement six, 13 wounds, one plus agility, so he just walks away from combat. Uh, on a seven plus, he leaves if he's already grievously wounded uh, the guy that he's sending to kill. And we have to decide who he's here to kill right now. So the Lord Castellan gets a one, two, and then six, so it's, he's here to kill the Mist Weaver. Well, I think we have to kill that guy before he can do anything. <laughs> so <clears throat> we need to figure out a way to do that, Mr. Mist Weaver. Uh, but I guess we'll start with Mr. Lord Castellans, uh, and he'll roll his three combat dice and get a five, five, four. So no healing lantern, but that's okay. We're going to just go on a murder spree. And I'm gonna start using some of these low dice because I don't think anyone else needs them. I'm gonna spend a two, which will lock the three. I'm gonna stab this guy on a four. I do, he dies, because he's already got two wounds. Now the ones with the shields have four wounds, but that makes them good for me to kill because I'm a damage two halberd. That last two, do it again, try and stab him, four plus. Yes I do, takes two damage. And then we will spend our four to do it again. Nope, he lives. Spend our five, do it again. Nope, and the last one, kill him. Nope, uh, and I cannot heal myself this turn, but I'm just happy being a tank. <laughs> It's over to you, sir. Okay, shard's gonna go. Five and five. Just double heal. Um, you could almost kill these guys. You have a three you can use to attack somebody with as well. Yeah. So you could gauntlet somebody and then. I'm gonna Reaper gauntlet the Acolyte. Sounds good. Three plus. Does it? Yep. D3. D3. Three plus. Kills him. Let's get another. And he's dead. Yep. We're gauntlet the Pink Horror. Cool. Hits. And D3. Kills him. Turns into two. And the last one. He's just three to just heal. To heal. Makes sense. Let's see what Mr. Battle Mage gets. Uh, he gets some sixes, which is good because you can put up shield. And he gets some twos, which are less good. So we're going to spend that two. And we're going to move over to here. Because we need line of sight. So we can see these two horrors. Um, we're going to spend this six for Mystic Shield. We're going to spend this for a bolt. And we'll bolt into him. We do, D3 wounds, you get three plus to kill him. I don't, it just takes a wound. And then the last one I can't do anything with really. So we're just gonna stay down though and I level up because I have gotten a, both my spells in one round. Draw two and then pick the one I like. I've got Eye of Fate uh, and War Dancer. Well, War Dancer is not gonna be great. Once per turn your hero can move it to one space before making a combat weapon action. And then for C, put a stun marker in this card until the end of the round, while this is, you can reroll saves of one for this hero. If you're a Celestial, other players whose heroes are in the same chamber can do the same thing. Oh, I'll be so good for my Lord Celestins, or my Lord Castellans. But I guess we'll give it to the Battle Mage. I don't actually have to burn my two. I can use that two for the Eye of Fates. I reroll saves of one. All right, let's, let's, see, let's see what you got, Miss Weaver. Well, that's not too terrible, that's some bolts. So hopefully you get some wounds on him before he duplicates. He's got 13 though, so you're not killing him one go. The bolts come out. So three plus. Yep. Hits, two three wounds. Three. Bolts, so there's the first three. Is that? Um, I'm gonna do it again. Makes sense. Three plus. Gets it. D3. Oh man, six wounds. Gonna go again. <laughs> you have down to four if you do it again. Glimmer missed, makes sense. Now he's gonna discard all the fives to hit and you. And the last two I'll just go around, makes sense. All right, let's roll some behaviors. Uh, you have the leads, you can choose which monster goes first. You wanna just get the assassin over with? Yeah, let's go with the assassin. Okay, so roll dice, see what he does. Four, he's gonna duplicate. So he duplicates, they both have the same number of wounds on them, and then he's gonna move to the closest hero as possible and attack. He's gonna start fighting my Lord Celestin. So he's gonna move like this, because he has a one plus dodge, the second one. And then he's gonna attack each one with his stab slicer, so three dice on each. So three dice on my, um, you wanna roll it? Three dice on my Celestins. Hitting on threes, damage one, two hits, three plus armor. Pass them both, and then three dice onto the battle mage. One hit, he's got a five plus save because of Mystic Shield, and he passes. Uh, now we can roll for whoever's next. We got Horrors, and we've got the, Let's go for the Blue Horrors. Blue Horrors, yeah. The second one doesn't do anything when he splits, so you're good in this case. Uh, let's do... Oh, that's an attack, well. We'll see what they are. Six, escape ring, move as close as possible, attacks with its uh, melee weapons. So they're just gonna attack you. Yep. Uh, they've got their flickering blades, so two attacks, hitting on, and they are blue horrors, threes, I got it. One hits, and then on a four plus you'll dodge it. You don't, and a five plus your armor goes off. 
You're good. Second one, misses twice. Finally, we'll do the, uh, whatchamacallums? The, uh, Carrick Acolyte. There is no escape. Each Acolyte moves towards the nearest hero, then attacks the nearer with whatever's weapons in range. So he's gonna go one over to here and try and stab my Lord Celestance. He's got his Glaive, though. He's a dangerous one. Uh, two attacks on fours. Both hit. Damage two. Three is a save. Pass them both. Nobody fights the tank. <laughs> All right, new Destiny roll. Let's not have any more assassins show up. How about that? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, we lose some twos, which is gonna be, I think, nothing because I don't think we have enough treasure cards out. When Pug's showing up, we only have one treasure card out. So, uh, it's going to be the hero phase, and I believe I have the lead this turn. Yes. All right, Lord Castellan, let's do this, bro. You're gonna get, get some work done. Yeah, we like it. Oops, that was a five, double five, and a one. Uh, so let's do the easy stuff first. We're gonna burn one to heal. Whoop. Use this three to murder stab Mr. Um, Assassin on a four. Nope. Uh, locks the six. Then we're going to, I guess, murder stab you again on a four. We do, takes two damage, so it's only got two left. Murder stab you again on a four. Nope. I'm gonna burn my ring of celerity. Get two more dice back. Roll to see what they are. A four and a two. I'm gonna murder stab him again. I don't, last one. <laughs> ah, kills him, but we have to see if it's him or the illusion. So on a one to three, this guy's the illusion. On a four to six, he's not. He's the illusion. So this guy gets removed, but this guy's still only got two wounds left. So he's got a total of uh, 11 wounds on him. All right, and we are all done. I kill, I didn't kill anybody actually. He's just removed, so I don't get the renown. Over to you. Let's go for Miss Weaver. Miss Weaver? All right, gonna try and get that kill. Get some ones, twos, and threes. Ones, fours, and threes. Use that one to walk. Go get line of sight on the zapper. If you stand right there, you can see him. Oh, yeah. Whoop. You can throw some bolts on him if you want. Yep. Three plus. Nope, another one. Plus. Gets him, yeah. D3, just need a three plus. Kills him, blah! Three renown for that. You gotta get three renown because you killed the deadly assassin. Oh, get a skill card. You sure do. Battle Weaver, that's not, or sorry, Battle Wrath. Whenever there's a slain enemy, increase uh, the score of your lowest hero dice by one. If you're as chaotic, you can pick one of your hero dice instead to have, of having to increase the lowest. Jaws of Death, coordinate, give the hero dice to another player that has not yet taken their turn. While they have the dice, their weapons hit values are plus, or sorry, one plus against adversaries adjacent to your hero. That's cool, Jaws of mm -hmm. Death. You have a bodyguard rule there. You like that one? I like the buff. All right, zap this guy, he's got one wound left. Nope. Misses. My wizard's gonna go. Let's see what he gets for actions. Battle mage. Oh, I love it. All the sixes in the world. Uh, well, let's start off by using this six. Whoop. To put up Mystic Shield, so they're all protected. Um, and then we're gonna use this three to zap him. We do. D3 wounds, doesn't even matter because he's got one left and he turns into a spark. I gain a renown, which means I, oh no, I've already leveled up. Whoop. Use this dice for Eye of Fate to put the stun marker on there uh, so we can reroll saves of one. And I guess we'll just keep blasting dudes. Might as well. I'm gonna blast another dude. So we're gonna blast this fella. Hits, D3 wounds. Turns into a spark. Uh, last blast, might as well. Try and hit that guy. Uh, we do. Uh, we're hitting this guy this time. And do two wounds, he's got one left. The battle mage is Fini. So it is over to you. You want to try and clean up? Just a couple dudes left. And remember, your minus one to hit because this guy's still alive. It hasn't mattered recently, but might matter now. You don't have to do one damage to kill them. Let's teleport. Whoop. Right here. Stab that guy. Stab the aura, or sorry, the uh, Carrick Acolyte. With bladed barbs. Just need two plus. plus. Yep. That's a three plus actually because of the dude here. Oh, your minus one so hit. It's not. Nope. And try again. I'm gonna do Reaper Gauntlets. Okay. Him. Missed. Uh oh. Guess we're fighting for one more turn. <laughs> and I'm just the four to heal. Okay, cool. Because before that's turn. So let's see what happens during the monstre phase. Uh, I'll do these little guys first. See what they do. Horse five capering. So he'll move forward. Try and fight you. Uh, he needs his. Uh, so two attacks on fours. Dodge on a five. Yeah. Again, exact same thing on fours. Nothing. Uh, and then for the acolyte, he's going to one. Draw their blood. Uh, try and summon a horror. Then, uh, so each acolyte moves towards the nearest hero, attacks with whichever weapons in range. 
Rodine add one for each wound they caused. All right, so he's gonna try and hit the closer in range, so I'm gonna have him hit me as opposed to you because I've got the good armor save. Mm -hmm. Hits once, three plus armor. Good. That's endo turn. Uh, so it's going to be this hands over to you. And let's roll to see what destiny is. Don't bring any more guys in. Double twos. I think that's lug. Yeah, not enough treasure cards, so we are good. He does not show up, and it's just going over to activation. So you get to choose who goes first. Get him to Nebral Shard. Sure. Kill them all. Yeah. Go ham. Go murder style. Cut on a three. Uh, two plus. Oh, no, it's three, three plus because of him. Kills him. Blup. He's dead. Get around. These guys won't give me They won't give you any levels, that's right, yeah. But you will kill three guys in a round, which will give you a level. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Stab him. Three plus. Nope. Stab him three plus. Nope. Oh, come on. Three plus. Gets him, and then burn a die. Burn that one. I don't know. I used to fight. Yeah. Okay. Nope. nope. Uh, locks the three. Just do the last one. Kill him. Finish one. him up. Three. Ah, oh, you can't do it. Can't seal the deal. All right. We got to finish the job with Lord Castellan. As it was always meant to be. <laughs> Spend the two to walk. One. Two. Uh, I guess one, two. Go over to here. And stab you. Uh, another one to stab. That. And that's good. I have to rotate. So I'm going to move. And then I'm going to rotate this one. One. Whoop. And then you can go over to your next character. That's gonna turn. So this, when this hits this, something happens, so. Uh, beam touches the statue go to pass away 49. As the beam of otherworldly illumination struck the demon statue, the champions heard a terrible shriek of rage. Great cracks began to spread across the other surface, and from them shone an infernal light. Thus did the champions come to realize what they had done. And so now we have to move one more of them. All right, so the battle mage is gonna go. He just needs to walk over and move a statue. Let's see how many actions he gets. Need some fours in here. Oh, we're good all day. Spend one, go one, two, three, four, and then spend another one to turn it. Whoop! And then we hear the cracks open as the demonic statue at last shattered apart. The blue flames roared up from its sundered remains and hanging amidst those spectral fires was revealed the gaunt summoner. All by the shadow of his true self, the demon favored the champions with an unsettling smirk and then raised one hand. Up from his outstretched palm, there drifted a glinting fragment of amulet of which the Gaunt Summoner had spoken before. This proclaimed the ethereal demon was the first piece of the puzzle, for on it was seared a syllable of his true name. Such words have power, he revealed, and should the champions gather them all, they would be able to bind him to their will, albeit for a few moments. Long enough to demand his boon and earn their freedom. Why should he tell them all? Asked the Summoner with a sharp smile. Perhaps it was just his nature. Or the caprice of Zinch. Perhaps he'd earned such revelation. Uh, or perhaps his fear of these interlopers was so little that he would hand the keys to unlock his power knowing that they would never live long enough to use them. With that last procurement, he, the spectral creature raised his blue blade and darted to the attack. The amulet fragment still orbiting lazily around them with the promise of rewards yet to be reaped. The beam shuts off immediately and no longer have any effect. Set up the gaunt summoner directly in front of the statue and put the fragment of Hish Mark the symbol above, next to the board. If the Gaunt Summoner is slain, the rune marked players can then take the fragment, completing their trial. Turn to the start of this book and read ending a trial to see what happens next. The summoner has nine wounds, um, and all of our heroes have gone except for your Mistweaver. No, Mistweaver went. Oh, she did go, that's right. So it's, everyone's gone, it goes right to the hero phase. Um, I do have a die left, actually. So I guess I could, but he's in base to base with me. Do something. Try and break away with this three, need a five plus. Nope. Um, last eye, five plus. Yes, we're gonna go back to here. here. <laughs> All right, behavior for the Gaunt Summoner during the monster phase. Gets a two, Capricious Fury, remove the Summoner from the board, then each player rolls a die. Set the Summoner up adjacent to the hero's player, rolled the lowest, and the Summoner attacks him with his Warp Tongue Blade. So let's see what we can see. It's going to be a one for the Lord Castellant, a one for the Mistweaver, so they roll off. Three, Five, all right, so he's gonna fight my tank, which is good. <laughs> Ends up over here. One die, two plus. Hits, four plus save, we're good. All right, fate, we have to fight the summer. He's got nine wounds. Uh, and actually, the sixes go away, which means we may have a random event occur. Let's see what it is. High, 30. Three. Came from within the walls, an ominous clicking and whirring as unseen mechanisms spinning maliciously in the dark. The champions wheeled and turned, trying in vain to determine the source of the terrible sound. Then, with a vicious hiss, the clockwork blade sprang forth. 
The Runemark player puts three stun markers in front of them, representing the three blades, then rolls a die. If the result is less than the agility, they are struck by the blades and suffer a wound for each marker in front of them. Otherwise, they dodge one of the blades, discard one marker, and then roll again to see whether they can dodge another. I'm just going to put him in front of Mr. Um, Tini Shard because he has a one plus agility, so he just goes dodge, 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 and look, he hey, passed look them that. all. <laughs> All right, uh, so now we have to have you pick who's going first. Do you want the shard to go first, or would you oh, like yeah. shards, shards going, going first? first? All right, let's see what kind of stuff you get as he dodges mysterious blades. Ones, threes, and fives. So I'm gonna have to move. You can. One, two, three, four. You have a one plus dodge, so you don't really care about breaking off. Mm, so bladed barbs. Can you make a stab. Plus. Laser shut down, you'll hit. Oh, you're on a three plus because this guy's still here. Oh, yeah. Try again. Hits, takes damage. One damage. Blah! Oh, wait, what's his save? He doesn't have a save, that's right. No, bad guys don't. Three plus for Reaper Gauntlet, so four plus. Hits, D3. Three damage, one. One, so you get two. Three, which will lock the four. So just do another bladed barb. So get him! So one more damage. Okay. Uh, and he is at three damage now. All right, Lord Castellan, murder eyes. Ah, good enough. <laughs> Let's use the one to stab. We don't. Let's use this one to stab. We do. Takes two. So he's at five. He uses two to stab. We do. He's at seven. He uses five to stab. Nope. Kill him. Nope. <laughs> Get him, Miss Weaver Shy. You need some threes, you got two chances to bolt him, plus the one uh, destiny dice, which is a four. Zap him. So. Three plus, four plus because it's the uh, deuter. Nope. Hits, actually I was hitting on fives there too. <laughs> Try again. One more. Nope. Nope, uh oh. Walk onto him, catch him, do something. Get rid of him because he's, he's nope. cramping our style. Yeah, let's do that, so I'll walk to here. Okay, and you roll off against him. One, I think you get his boon. You do. Scard him to reroll two dice after you make an action roll or a destiny roll. And you've got one die left. Mm, I'll just burn it. Yeah, we'll put it on the glimmering. Oh no, you need a, yeah, I need a threes. Plus. Got it. All right, Mr. Wiz, you get sixes and stuff. Uh, so that six is definitely going to become a arcane shield. Um, and then this four is going to be a bolt. Hits, d3. One, so he's at eight. And then the last one hits D3. He's at uh, 9, 10. Um, and I think that will kill him. Let's use a little, well, he's only got nine wounds, but I'm not sure if one of this guy's attacks hit. So I'm going to use this last one to try and hit him again. And I missed. I don't think the Lord Celestine hit with one of his attacks. I think one of his attacks was a four. So that would actually be at minus two damage. So he should still be at eight. All right. So God Summoner's going to go. Does a four, which means stabbing again. But we have to roll off to see who he stabs. So I roll dice for my heroes. It's going to be a six and a four, so one's going to be the shardy stabs. So he makes one of his warp attacks on a two plus. Hits. Uh, four plus to dodge it. Dodges it. This was Fires of Change. Remove the Gaunt Summoner and set him up at the portal that is furthest from where he was, but still in the same chamber. Then he attacks near here with Searing Warp Fire. Uh, 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 so he's actually going to go over to here and attack you with Searing Warp Fire, which is going to be slightly different. Uh, D6 attacks, missile, 3 plus D3. So D6 attacks, he's going to do 1, uh, hits on a 3, with hits, and then damage D3. Uh, but make your save first. So your mystery for shade. Six plus. plus 1 because of the land, or the thing. You're fine anyway, oh. so you just dodged it. Let's see what happens. Uh, these go away, these go away. We don't have the treasures to bring him in, but another random event will occur, and this is here. Um, I'm gonna spend him to reroll the sixes. Reroll the sixes? Okay, so the two sixes become a one and a six, which is perfect, which means that they actually stay. Random events, I got the lead. Whoop! We're gonna go Johnny Castellan. Go get him. Go get him with your mallet. Pretty sure you failed last time, but you're gonna pass this time. So we got a six, a three. We use this one to walk. One, two. Two to stab, fours, nope. Five to stab, hits, two damage, that's gonna kill him. Yeah, we forgot when he was wounded, actually he would have done exactly what we tried to do the first time, which was just stand there and stab him, um, but it, it's regardless. So everyone's gonna get uh, one renown, and I'm gonna get D3, uh, which is two more, so I'll actually put him at a level, and he'll draw a skill, because I killed him. One, two. Divine Will and Air Strider. 
so, Leap 2+, plus. you move your hero D3 spaces, you don't have to make any pinning rolls, that's pretty awesome. Um, other players can reroll attack rolls of one if you're in the same chamber. Ooh. I think we take Divine Will. Rerolling ones to hit sounds pretty great. Air Strider's cool, but I don't think I'm gonna roll dice. Also leveled with the Tenebral Shard. So you're gonna get Fires of Battle or Etheric Surge. If your action roll contains any doubles, your hero heals a wound. That's pretty awesome. If you roll a six when making an attack roll, add a hero dice with a score of one to your hero card. You can take the Etheric Surge, so you can potentially just attack forever with the shard. Ending a trial, we've killed the Gaunt Summoners. When the hero is successful or not, you must wander the Silver Tower in search of the Gaunt Summoners' next test. Amidst its labyrinthine corridors, which have been learned, uh, may fade like a dream, while treasures may serve the purpose or simply lost. Each player rolls a die for each treasure card on a 1 to 3, return to the treasure deck on a 4 to 6 they keep it. Any fragments of the amulet are kept. If the group has no fragments, each player must then discard all their skill cards. If players don't have any fragments of the amulet between them, its power will help them regain their memories. If they have one fragment, each hero can keep one skill. Two, they can keep, uh, two to three, they can keep two skills. If between four and seven fragments, they can keep three. Uh, and yeah, so basically you scale up. So we can each keep one. So I'll keep my skill, my skill. You'll have to discard one of the shard skills and you're gonna do a Thurik Surge. All right, so that was end of the game. We defeated the Gaunt Summoner. We got some new levels going into mission two, which you guys will see in two weeks. So big thanks to Danny for painting all this up and coming and bringing it in. Um, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you for more Silver Tower in the future. Until then, I'm Ash. Have a great day.